Happy Friday afternoon, everybody. Sean Tierney here from Insights and Automation with the question of the week. It's been kind of a crazy day here, so I like to do these in the morning, but just so much going on. So I still wanted to get it out today. And I also still have, I hope, I got some meetings with vendors this afternoon. I hope to be able to get the Automation Minute and show out for this week as well. But in any case, let's talk about this week's question of the week. And I did not update the slide here. So I'll just uh, give it to you. I'll just read it to you. Basically, uh, a customer had, or the person who contacted me had a Micrologics 1500. And he had the um, mini DIN port here on the base. He had that go into a bulkhead connector on the panel, right? Well, he decided to buy a Seymour HMI. I got to reach out to Seymour. I, I totally forgot about those guys. But um, in any case, I'd love to get them on the show, find out what's new with them. But in any case, um, when he plugged the Seymour into this mini den, he's like, well, now what do I do with my bulkhead connector? Now, luckily, he doesn't have the original LSP that doesn't have a serial port on the side. He had the LRP, which has a nice serial port. As you can see all these in my historical videos, the Automation Minute, I covered this a lot in season one. Um, you can get the whole season, 50 videos for like five bucks on Vimeo. Um, all that will be in the description after the show. But in any case, um, um, so he's like, what do I do? What do I do? Is there any cable that's like a, a female mini DIN to a female uh, nine pin D shell? Like, you know, great question. Great question. Um, the port on here is female. So the cable he has is male from the bulkhead connector. So the first thing I said, if I were you, since you have an LRP, why not have the Seymour go to the 9-pin D-shell? That's like much more common than many did, right? And so that's the first thing I said to him. The second thing I said was, you know, if you did find a cable that had a like a female mini DIN to something else, you probably have to use a gender changer or something on it. Because very likely the pin outs aren't going to be right, right? So when you're going from an HMI to a PLC, you're typically going typically, <laughs> almost always going from a DCE device to a DTE device, right? When we're talking RS-232. So in any case, um, that was very interesting. And, you know, it got me thinking. It's like, I, I looked in the manuals again. I did not see a female mini DIN cable. And I'm like, well, what would I do if I was in this position? And, you know, I couldn't get any more cables for my Seymour. Um, and I couldn't get any, any of the right replacement cables for my bulkhead connector. So we're really tying our hands here by saying we can't get the regular, the right stuff. Um, well, back in the day, I would've got the port splitter. And let me go here. Let's see if we can, uh, let's see if I can go over some tabs here. So if you go up to the automation blog, I have over a hundred articles and videos related to Micrologics. You can see them, always blends in for me right here. Tabs, Micrologics guide. There's over a hundred articles and videos <laughs> All about this a lot of close-up pictures on the uh 1500 and so that's uh, you know virtually everything up there is free some things require memberships but in any case uh um, one of the things though i want to look up was the port splitter because this guy was only out it seemed like it was only out for five or six years and it was such a great little you know uh, swiss, uh, swiss army knife that um i was always a big fan of it anyways um, let me show you what that looks like. So it was a 1747 uh, port splitter, DPS-1 and DPS-2. I thought these were great. I don't know why they would ever get rid of them. But in any case, let me show you what one of them looks like here. Here's the DPS-1. And look at, we get some mini DINs here, female mini DINs where you can plug in your bulkhead connector. And then we also have a D-shell here. So um, there's some limitations on what you can do with this. But still, it was a nice little thing to have. I really think Rockwell obsoleted this like 10, 15 years ago. So I did not go up and check, um, but you guys can if you want to. Here's the DPS-2 again. When you, when you did the port split, is one port was respond only, like kind of a dummy port. Like, and the other port was full blown. So, but still, that's great. One port could be for HMI, and the other port could be for the bulkhead connector, right? But, and of course, there are 9-pin D-shell to mini DIN cables. That's like our PMO2. Just standard stuff, right? Um, but in any case, so, you know, as I was doing this and doing the research for this, I thought, you know, you know what else would work? Um, well, and let me show you what I did. I searched on Micrologics 1500 here on the Rockwell's Literature Library, and I got almost everything was Compact Logics. It's like, 
you know so it's like really guys um so i was like all right i can i can i can fake them out i so i searched on 1764 which is the bulletin number and that gave me a lot more uh, stuff related to the micrologics 1500 than uh actually typing in micrologics 1500 but in any case as i was going through the manual and i did want to show you this brochure here i didn't think they still had this up there i'm very happy they do it's great to see the old products from back in the day and um you know i really wish they would have added uh, uh one of these uh one of these uh slide in processes that had ethernet like uh, make the 1400 like put the the 1400s brains in here and so you can slide it into the 1500 because everybody loved the 1769 io i got it upside down everybody loved the 1769 it's good io right so good design but anyways let me get back to uh back to here and so one of the things i was thinking of though is you know what i you know what would work and i forgot to mention this to him so i'll have to uh, put another post up there but I bet you, hey, one of these uh, 1761 net uh, AICs would work. Because you can use these um, for uh, 232 to 232. You don't have to go out to 45, right? So, you know, if, if you wanted to do a 45 drop, you, you know, but you had a 232 panel view. They actually make panel views that are 232, but speak DH45. They're rare and they're annoying. And I won't get into that right now, but... Anyways, I won't get into that right now. But um, in any case, because everybody thinks they're DF1. But in any case, so the only thing here is you, if uh, if this guy's not plugged in to the processor, you will have to wire in your power. But the way this would work is you could put your bulkhead connector here, right? And then you could just go your serial cable here to the, the PLC. And you'd want to make sure you use the right cable. I think you're going to want to, I think you want to CP3 there or a no modem cable. Um, I have tons of no modem, no modem adapters around. So when I guess wrong, I could just throw the adapter on it. But in any case, if you look here, I, there's none of these that are female. So there's no female cables here. Um, you know, if you go through this list, so, but that, that is, that was the question that came in. Um, I answered a lot of other questions. You well, know, before I even get to that, if you, uh, if you enjoy this show, please give me a like, a sub and a share because, um, you know, uh, I know people watch and they forget to give likes and that's the only way for this video to get out, you know, and for other people to see it. And I want to help as many people as possible. Also, if, um, if, uh, you want to catch every show I do, I did a much longer edition of this as, uh, the automation, uh, Q and a this morning, about a half an hour talking about question and answers. And I not only answered this question, I not only, I pulled up Factory Talk View. I did some stuff in VMware on that. Um, I also showed the Automation Museum, something I've wanted to do for a long time. I don't actually have any finances for it. So I do have a nook over here. I think it's an 8x10 or 10x10 area. I'm going to stop putting displays up. Um, I don't have the pictures to show you, but I showed that in that show. And um, I also gave a tour of the um, of the uh, the uh, application simulator. So after I run out of questions, uh, I'm going to start doing the application simulator and just going through, I got so many different application simulators, just talk about programming and create programs and that kind of stuff. So um, if you want to send your questions in, you can do so. Let's see if I can bring it up here. Um, yeah. So let me zoom out. Every time you click on the picture, it gets bigger. So you can submit your questions either on this video or via the automationblog.com forward slash question. If you just want to send it in privately, you can use a fake name. If your name is John and you want to use Joseph or Bobby, I don't care, right? I don't care. And, um, you know, we may use them for the show. We may use them for the question of the week. We may use them for the automation Q&A, which is a member level uh, uh, series. But in any case, um, feel free to send them in. And with that, nothing else to say, I guess. That's it. I just want to wish you guys all an awesome weekend. I still got some vendor meetings this afternoon, some videos to edit. But I can't wait to get out to the campground. Camping season is almost over. Right, it's been a little cool. I kind of like the cool after all those hot days, but um, summer's ending. So enjoy your weekend. I hope you have sun and nice weather, and I want to wish you uh, good health and happiness. And until next time, my friends, peace.